Welcome to another episode of Core Discussions. My name's Legacy. And I'm Max. I'm Bobby. Bobby Jay. All right, so this week we are doing a good one. In light of Super Bowl coming up, we are doing least deserving Super Bowl MVPs from the 2000s on. So we went through the list. We talked about Super Bowl MVPs. We had to have obviously watched that Super Bowl and gone through it because of our age. It's really going to be like the 2000s and on. We only did a top five because we most of the time we kind of agreed with the who got Super Bowl MVP. This list was actually very little controversy. Because These are really the only options. Yeah, there was five, and we all voted for the same five. The order is a little different, but we all voted for the same. So, gentlemen, are you ready? You're yes. Absolutely. All right. So, coming in in fifth spot, coming in with eight points, is actually the oldest Super Bowl here that we're going to get. It was the start of a dynasty, the greatest of all time. It is Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. winning the Super Bowl MVP in Super Bowl 36. Yeah, so I'll run by his statistics for the game. So he was Super Bowl MVP. He was 16 for 27, 145 yards, one touchdown, zero picks, with a quarterback rating of 86.2. So he gets it because he led the comeback drive at the end. I understand that. Mm, yeah, but we all feel that High Law was more deserving of it. Um, yeah. He had the interception touchdown, which in this game, I mean, that really swung the game. I mean, you're talking about a game where the score was 20 to 17. And that interception came in the second quarter, and it kind of made a statement, and it showed that the Patriots are going to be here. Because right after that, when Ty Law scored that touchdown, it was 7 to 3. That's the score. From then on, and they <laughs> extended the lead to 17 to 3. So that really put the, all the momentum on their side. And, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there. The reason why the, the uh, Patriots were in position for that game-winning field goal is because Brady didn't play that well. You know, if Brady has a good game, they probably don't need a game-winning field goal. I'm just saying, maybe he played better. You know, he went, they went had to, had to rely on the last drive. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, yeah, we all vote for it. I felt, yeah, this was probably it's one that he didn't deserve, really. I agree. It was really just that last drive because everybody thought, oh, this was – I felt this was really the moment where it kind of was like – the Brady hype started was like the comeback happening. Yeah. And I will also say for anyone that says Tom Brady is the sole responsibility of these Super Bowls, both these Rams Super Bowls prove how vital Bill Belichick was to the Patriots dynasty. And if you can't mm-hmm. see that, then you don't, you don't know football. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Look at the quarterbacks that Bill Belichick had when he wasn't with Tom Brady. Drew Bledsoe, who I think, again, was one of the most overrated players. And then Mac Jones, not very good. And then for the Browns, I, who, I don't even know who that quarterback was. Well, I, I think the interesting part comes with people who are saying, okay, well, if we're going to say, okay, well, Belichick has a losing record versus without Brady. Okay, cool. But then you're in the same breath going to go and hail Patrick Mahomes. I'm sorry, what's Andy Reid's record without Patrick Mahomes? Because it's really good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's without Smith, too. He was doing mm-hmm. fine. Like, he wasn't winning the Super Bowls as many, but he was still doing fine. His record was great. Yeah. So can we now say that actually Patrick Mahomes is not that great? It's really just Andy Reid's? He was good in Philly with McNabb, Vic, etc. And Andy Reid's uh, one of the best coaches of all time. So uh, like you said, Philip, uh, how can we possibly say it's just Patrick Mahomes hasn't done it without Andy Reid? Yeah, if that's the case, then it really means Patrick Mahomes is not that great. We're just trying to show how dumb that argument is. We know Mahomes will be good without Andy Reid and Andy Reid without him, obviously. So we're just saying Bill Belichick is good with or without Tom Brady. He is one of the smartest defensive coaches of all time. That's all we're saying. But that's yeah. not about the Super Bowl MVP. We believe it should have gone to his defensive player, Ty Law. Mm-hmm. And also had to, uh, the fun task of guarding in Holtz. Well, either way, Holt or Bruce, either way. Bruce, both of them, they both had combined. Combined, yeah. they both had a little over 100 yards combined. 10 catches, 100 yeah. yards. Yeah. And either Bruce is in the Hall of Fame or Tory Holt should be in the Hall of Fame. So, you know, you got two possible Hall of Fame with that Ty Law. Yeah, shut them out effectively. I mean, this is still the greatest show on turf. It was really kind of more the fact that this defense held them was really a big thing that shocked everybody. Like we were just talking about in the modern era, this is the biggest underdog to win a Super Bowl. Okay. All right. We're going to go into our next one. We're going to go to a more recent Super Bowl. This was also the possibility of starting of a dynasty. It was a good game with a great comeback involved. It was Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl 54. 
winning the Super Bowl MVP. Let me read you his stat line. So he was 26 for 42, 286 passing yards, two touchdowns, two picks, nine rushes, 29 yards, and a touchdown. He had two fumbles, did not lose them. But we all think the MVP should have gone to Damian Williams, who had 17 carries, 104 yards, and a touchdown, four catches, 29 yards, and one touchdown. And when he scored his rushing touchdown near the end of the game, I mean, that really just put it away. I was shocked when Damian Williams didn't win because he owned that game, running and receiving. Yeah, he also scored the go-ahead touchdown right before that. So, I mean, he really took over that fourth quarter. So, and Mahomes threw the two picks, and if you look at it, they weren't like the Kadarius Tony picks you see this year where it bounces right through his hands. They were just poor throws from Patrick Mahomes. I'm you, it's because so, they want to build a narrative, so they got to get the quarterbacks, that, the MVPs, so they can keep building people up as the next go. I'm telling you, it's all, it's yeah. all orchestrated. It's all orchestrated. I guarantee you, if this was the name, they would have given it to him. Mm-hmm. They didn't give it to him because they knew he was a third-string running back. I don't care what string you are. If you have a game like that, you deserve it, okay? Yeah. I don't know, but when you have the next guy you want to crown, like Patrick Mahomes. He didn't play that well. His quarterback rating was 78.1. Yeah, no, he did not have a great game. No, no, for most of that game, he was trash. Yeah, he was good in like the fourth quarter. Game, that was it, like with the combat, but it was like most of that game, he was trash. And... That's really it. Mm-hmm. Damian Williams. You know, no matter what, Patrick Mahomes or Travis Kelsey win the MVP this year, there's no doubt, if they win. Oh, yeah. Only those two guys are allowed. Yeah. The next one we're going to talk about, we're going to go back to an older Super Bowl. This one was, it was a blowout. Had a moment where you thought maybe there was a slight comeback happening, but then the other team just shut that down and said no. It was Super Bowl 37, Dexter Jackson winning it. This one came in with 10 points. So Dexter Jackson had uh, one tackle, two interceptions for 34 yards. We believe the MVP should have gone to Dwight Smith. He had four tackles, two interceptions for 94 total yards, and two touchdowns. So why does the guy that got two picks for no touchdowns get the MVP of someone who had two pick sixes? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, that one, yeah, that's really interesting. Now, the reasoning some people would say is because when he had the picks, oh, after the first one, it was it was 34-3, to three, and then the next one to score, it made yeah. the score to 48-21. So you could say they didn't have that much impact on the game, but still, I mean, we're splitting hairs here. This was a blowout win for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, <laughs> so I don't know why the pick sixes weren't weighted more. Because essentially for the Seahawks Super Bowl, when they beat the Broncos, Malcolm Smith's pick six was essentially what won him the MVP. Yep. So, yeah. So, I said that too. Yeah. Didn't really make sense. Nope. Dexter Jackson had both of his picks, and the game was um, six to three by the time he, after he had both of those picks. So, you could say that they swung things in the beginning. But again, I mean, it was such a dominant performance. I think it just goes to the guy who, who scored. Uh, some people might call this crazy. If you constantly look at the list like War Super Bowl MVP, his name is always near the top. I don't think any of the ones that we're saying are. No. Yeah, because it really hurts when the other guy got two interceptions with two pick sixes. That's like, how often do you, does that happen in a game? I mean, you got to reward the man. Yeah, that's pretty insane. He got those. All right, next one we're gonna be talking about is a Hall of Famer in a game that was honestly the round before kind of determined who most people thought was gonna win the Super Bowl that year. It was also a historic moment because. There was a huge question of would this guy ever win a Super Bowl? It was Peyton Manning winning it in Super Bowl 41. That was his first Super Bowl when they played the Bears. Mm -hmm. Now, this hurts me because Peyton Manning's one of my favorite players, but I have to be honest, this was not his best performance. And really, the whole playoff run wasn't great for him. But his stats for the game were 25 for 38. 247 passing yards, one touchdown, one pick, one lost fumble. I will mention that it was a rainy game. It was a bit of a mess. But... We all believe the winner should have been Dominic Rhodes, who had 21 carries, 113 yards, and one touchdown. And he was really just chewing up them Bears all day. And like I said, it was a rain game, so that's a lot. That's very important, the run game during those types of weather games. And this Bears defense was very good, and he chewed them up all day. This game was really more about a legacy MVP than more of a he deserved an MVP. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I agree with that. That's fine. I think if Dominic Rhodes' name was Edron James, he would have won it. Mm-hmm. Which is upsetting because they won the Super Bowl the year after he left, and Edron James did so much for them, so it kind of sucks. But yeah, poor guy. Yeah, but I agree. I think it's more just a uh, Peyton Manning, you finally did it kind of thing. 
And we we felt this way for a long time. Ever since they announced Manning won, we all thought Dominic Rose should have won it. So it's not like revisionist history. Like, no, we, we felt that from day one. Dominic mm-hmm. Rose, I know you're a big time fan of the podcast. We love you. Yeah. We thought you should have deserved it. That's all I was saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, you had to meet with Peyton. I had to meet with Brady. I always met, yeah, didn't deserve that MVP. But yeah, there you go. Um, the last one we're going to talk about, this one is probably pretty obvious. This was number one by everybody. It came in with 20 points. Obviously, the one we haven't talked about. And the second they announced it, I was baffled that this dude won it. Mm-hmm. And though I'm a huge fan of this guy, 100% did not deserve it. It was Julian Edelman winning it for Super Bowl 53. Now, we'll say, of the Super Bowl MVP we talked about, on paper, his stats do look the best. He had 10 catches, 141 yards, which I agree most of the time would mm-hmm. mean you were MVP worthy. Yeah. But this score of this Super Bowl was 13 to 3. We argue that either Dante Hightower or Stephon Gilmore should have won. Gilmore had a huge interception. He had two crucial, like, deep routes, deflections in the end zone. Clutch defense. And that interception was very crucial because it happened at a time where the Rams were driving, and I believe it was when they were about to score, after the Patriots just scored and kind of sealed the game of, like, okay, no, they're not winning. So, yeah, so this was on in the fourth quarter. And again, this was 13 to 3 games. So, really, it's been a game the whole way. So, Jerry Goff got picked off with four and a half minutes left. And they were on the New England 27. So, they were driving. So, yeah, huge. Mm-hmm. That ended the game, essentially. Yeah, sealed the game. 10 to 3 at that point. Yes, it was so 10 to 3. If they, had scored, if they had scored a touchdown, it's tied. It's, and the way the offense were mm-hmm. lucky, it was like, oh, God, this is. It. Also, really, and if you remember in that game, most of his catches happened in the first half. So they didn't really lead to much. If a team allows three points in a Super Bowl, the deep, someone on defense better win the MVP. You know? Yeah. Especially yeah, if the yeah, offense yeah. only scored 13. He had 48 yards in the second half. So 48 of his 141 yards came in the first half, mm-hmm. where it was essentially, what, 3-3 three, three at half or 3-6 at half. So it was still, yeah. like you said, the yards didn't quite equate to much. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I don't know. I just no, feel like Stephon Gilmore really, or Hightower. Hightower had two sacks, but Gilmore, I think more so. I would, I, think, I, would, yeah. I would pick Gilmore. Mm-hmm. He had a, yeah, he had a lights out game. He, he deserved it. it we we said, we said if it was thirteen to three and a defensive player didn't win it, they're never going to win an award again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you could have yeah. made the same argument for okay, if you're just saying okay, well, it was the whole defense. Well, then you could have made the same argument for that Seahawks Super Bowl. It was a defensive effort when they shut the. That pay, that uh, Broncos team down, but you still found a guy to give it to. Exactly. Look, man, they they don't give us a vote, so that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. We could have righted some of these wrongs. It's a shame, and it, it would always be funny just because the year before this year it was like all defense and punting. The year before it was like there was no defense or punting. Exactly. Yeah. This is this is just how we feel. But yeah, those are the picks. That's our top five. Did you agree with our list? Did you not? Did you think the order should have switched up? Are there some Super Bowls you wish we talked about? Are there some older ones you think I need to get a shout out? Please let us know in the comments below. Remember, we did just do Super Bowls from 2000s on, so that kind of limited our list. Let us know any arguments or agreements you might have. Again, thank you all for all the fans that have watched consistently. Please comment. Please uh, help us out. It's good with the algorithm. And let us know what your thoughts are. My name's Legacy. And I'm Max. I'm Bobby. I'm Jay. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And hit the notifications. And we will see you later.